Hi, my name is Sandy Baird, and I am a citizen activist and also an attorney in Burlington with my colleague, Eric Agnero, who is also involved in the legal profession and being a citizen journalist. And he's here today to report to us on Africa in 2024. Uh, Mr. Agnero is from the Ivory Coast. He recently visited there and kind of took the temperature there particularly because there are elections that occurring there this year. Is that correct? Or, yes. And so he's here to report on what he sees um, at, in these elections and also the mood that's rising in Africa. Okay, so what's going on? Well, but you are from Ivory Coast. Yeah, thank you. Okay, could you point out where Ivory Coast is? Ivory on Coast our map? is West Africa, next to Ghana. And, right and, here, and, correct? Yeah, you know, so you have Ivory Coast here, Ghana, and, and Liberia bordering. You know, on the ocean Liberia? front, Liberia here, Ghana here, and then Mali. Uh, Ivory Coast is uh, is uh, and uh, has been for a long time. It still is the jewel of uh, the uh, French Empire and past colonial empire in Africa. Ivory Coast is really the epitome of you know uh, what a country could be when it serves the interests of uh, the West, particularly that of a former colonial power. So I was recently... A former colonial power is that France. Was, is France. Is France. Okay. I was recently in Ivory Coast. Because uh, uh, that's where you're from. Yeah, a gloomy atmosphere. People are very, you know, like... Uh, the country is going from... Uh, um, um, is being praised by the West as, you know, a growing economy, but... When you go in Ivory Coast, you see that the population don't get anything from nothing. from nothing, nothing at all. It's all, you know, going back to the uh, major corporations, the international corporations that are, you know, investing in the country because the International Monetary Fund, the World Trade Organization, and, and the uh, Western powers, you know, uh, a force those countries to open the economies to uh, these, uh, uh, these big, these major corporations. Most of them have uh, tax exemption for 10, 5, 10 years. Uh, but they are corporations not owned by people from the Ivory Coast. Not at no, all. No, you know, if you go really deep into the ownership of these, you know, the businesses over there, uh, you want, like, probably 90% of uh, the corporations are you know, uh, you know, either uh, uh, subsidies, I mean, uh, uh, um, uh, local representations of uh, bigger corporations, American corporations, French corporations, and British, uh, British uh, but mostly French. Because that was their history. That was their history. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, in Ivory Coast what is going on in Africa, which is, you know, a continent that is seen as uh, a beacon of growth, of economic growth, but in return, the population don't get anything from that. Uh, so you have uh, uh, a crime that is rising, but you have also uh, uh, some kind of, uh, uh, you know, it's a, a mess. You have uh, 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 urbanism, 50% of the population in Africa, even more. In all of Africa. In all of Africa, live now in cities that have no logic in terms of urbanism. Why? Uh, because, you know, uh, uh, those, the, 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 the leaders are not doing anything. They're kind of reacting on a day-to-day -day basis, more as serving as agent of foreign corporations and, and foreign governments than planning their development. And then they have the pressure from the IMF and the World Bank. The IMF, what is it? The International Monetary right. Fund, because most of these countries are plagued with uh, 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 debt. Mm -hmm. They have to pay back their debts. So uh, they are forced to privatize most of their economies. So you see a country like Ivory Coast, all the strategic you know, uh, 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 sectors of the economy are in the hands of uh, private sector and not even local private sector international. Do they own the land? 
also in the countryside? I've been trying for 20 years to get the title of a land that I've inherited from my, uh, my family. Mm -hmm. I haven't gotten the paper yet. So you have an administration that doesn't work. Corruption is plaguing the country. Ivory Coast right now is, you know, facing massive scandals of corruption. But yet, yet, uh, France, the U.S., British and all these... Uh, uh, European countries are continuing to uh, to uh, to praise the local government because they provide cacao, they provide cacao, gold, chocolate. Uh, chocolate, they provide you know all the resources uh, to uh, to the West, especially in amid a fierce competition from the Chinese and mm. the Russians. So to but be the Chinese and the Russians don't own the corporations, correct? Yeah, I mean, you have, like, it's it's not a secret. You have a, a Wagner that does business. Military, yeah. though. Military. Yeah, right. You know, uh, the Russians and the Chinese are in major, you know, infrastructure. I mean, Chinese are in infrastructure building. But with the Chinese, let's say, and then the Russian, it's more of a, yes, we sit down around the table and then we can discuss business. But they have the feeling, and then the new generation have the feeling that with the West, it's still a colonial mentality. It's a co I mean, it's still, you know, a, a, you know, a domination, you know, uh, 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 from, from the West rather than real business. I don't know uh, if most Americans are educated terribly about Africa or in even much more of the world in general. Um, I remember, though, taking a class at the University of Massachusetts in which a professor said that between 1878, prior to World War I, and 1914, the beginning, all of Africa was colonized mm -hmm. by the West or by what we now see as the NATO powers. Mm -hmm. All of Africa except Ethiopia. Except Ethiopia. And, that's, and that was when this colonization of the Western white countries controlling the economy, the land, the police, of Africa and probably Asia and Latin America as well. Yeah. As well. But I want to concentrate on Africa. So that was correct, correct? Yeah, yeah for, for all these years. And then in the 60s... Uh, the wave know, of independence. The wave of independence, mostly, you know, uh, independences that were granted rather than fought Not for. Not in Algeria. By Not in Algeria, but most of the countries and, uh, you know, the other sub-Saharan Africa countries were given the independence. But not their economic independence. Not the economic And that was still controlled. Even political independence. Right. Because, uh, you know, the president that is in the Ivory Coast right now is going maybe to go for a fourth mandate when the constitutions just give you the right to have only two mandates. Now, who is, okay, so now let's get into these elections. Yeah. Yes. Okay. What about, what? so Ivory Coast has an election? Not uh, Ivory Coast, but a major election would be that of Senegal. 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 Okay, let's see where that is. Senegal <laughs> was also uh, during the colonial uh, era. Senegal is here. Senegal during French the speaking, yeah, French speaking, you have next to Mauritania, and 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 Gambia, and bordering Bamako. I mean, bordering uh, Mali. Senegal was the capital Dakar. of the uh, Dakar. Dakar and Senegal were you know were the uh, uh, center of the West African part of the French Empire. So Senegal is very much like uh, 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 the second capital, was for a long time second capital of uh, the French in, <laughs> I mean, uh, when it comes to Africa. The first Sen being Abidjan. Yeah, yeah. Senegal has for a long time been a beacon of democracy, you know, uh, 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 trying to, uh, they've been, known for a peaceful transition of power, even though it's still, you know, uh, uh, governed by lackeys of, uh, of the Western world. But, you know, Senegal has had a long tradition of peaceful transfer to power. And then with the contraction uh, due to uh, the uh, aggressiveness of, I mean, uh, the aggressivity of, uh, I mean, uh, the presence of the Chinese and the reaction of the Western world that, is competing against the Chinese and the Russian, you know, those countries like Senegal has, has moved, has transitioned to autocratic governments. Senegal has? Yeah, because you have the, uh, the Russian and the Chinese, but also you have a new generation of Africans that don't want to be just, 
you know, uh, 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 a citizen of countries that are, uh, uh, you know, under uh, the rules of other countries. They dream about independence. Mm -hmm. Most of them have been uh, in school in Western countries. A lot of them are contributing to the global debate when it comes to governance, when it comes to science. So uh, it's hard for them. It's not. It's painful for them to still be, you know, uh, uh, subhuman. I mean, considered a second-class citizen uh, in, uh, in the global, you know, uh, uh, world. So uh, uh, those. Those younger Africans are pushing for more democracy, for uh, better governance, and 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 they are somehow, you know, more, uh, uh, you know, let's say uh, 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 they're getting closer to Russia and China because because they're seeing Russia and China as also, you know, example of defiance against the West. Mm -hmm. So, That's uh, what you noticed when you were in Ivory Coast. Yes. So the governments that are that are faithful to the Western world and now, are they? Oh yeah, because if they're not, the West will lose. So they can't. What do you mean the West will lose. The West will lose their, uh, you know, hegemony. Their, their hegemony in Africa. Uh -huh. So the West is counting on those, you know, uh, 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 presidents and leaders like uh, uh, Macky Sall in Senegal, okay. Alassane Ouattara in uh, in Ivory Coast, and and those that were toppled down by uh, the jun the juntas in Mali and Burkina Faso uh -huh. that were also, you know, uh, 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 some kind of uh, 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 um, a servant, that's how they call them, of uh, the West. So uh, the West is now closing their eyes on, I mean, they they, they, they condoning, you know, uh, these uh, um, uh, 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 um, uh, leaders that are transitioning to become like more uh, 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 more of dictators and to face a, a push from the younger generation and the opposition parties. So uh, Senegal is... Is there, is there an election? Yeah, there's a, an election in Senegal and Macky Sall and the, the, the uh, government in power in Senegal has managed to bear you know, one of the uh, leading opposition uh, 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 um, uh, leaders uh, by uh, imprisoning him. Oh, so he's, he, cannot, he cannot be, That's you know, part of election? the election. So uh, is Senegal going to, because there were a lot of violence recently uh, prior to the election, uh, I don't know if the um, supporters of uh, uh, those new leaders that are being prevented from participating in the election will accept that. Would that be, you know, chaos? Senegal will give the tone to what will happen to the French post-colonial and power. If Senegal uh, lose, I mean, if Senegal falls into the hands of that new generation of uh, leaders that are defiant vis-a-vis -vis the West, then uh, the West can then maybe react by uh, financing uh, rebellions and opposition mm -hmm. party, and it could be a chaos because there's so much. In other state. words, would the West accept a defiant? They won't accept because right. there's, they always the, 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 there's always the menace of China uh -huh. <laughs> and Russia. So the West is scared. If maybe those leaders that we control are no longer there, yeah. the new young, I mean, and then we saw it. So you have the elections in Senegal that will be a very, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's very soon. It's like in February, I think. And then you have also uh, what's going on in Mali and Burkina Faso. What that is going on? Mali and Burkina Faso are... French speaking. French speaking. Well, Senegal too. Yeah. Yeah. Mali and Burkina Faso got rid of uh, the French. Mm -hmm. They have like, they don't want the French... Recently. French really, recently. Right. But... Uh, uh, so you have two countries that are now led by a junta, Guinea also. But will it be uh, will it be contagious? Uh -huh. Because more and more countries are facing those turmoil and uh, this boiling, you know, uh, 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 um, general opinion that wants a change. So Mali and Burkina Faso, depending on on how they will do. 
without France and without the Western world and with the help of Russia and China. Okay, so these countries that you're talking about have kind of ditched the Western world in a yes, lot of ways. Somehow, yeah. And have adopted... A more productive or like, uh, uh, like uh, uh, a more... Uh, uh, like more partnership, uh, uh, a better, uh, um, I mean, a more active partnership with China and Russia, mm -hmm. especially Russia. Mm -hmm. you know, Why? Because Russia is helping them. Russia is not a former colony, I mean, colonizer. Right. So Russia is not there with, you know, post-colonial mentality, post-colonial agenda. They are there probably to do business like everybody, mm -hmm. to maybe uh, uh, take make profit, profit, make mm -hmm. profit. But with Russia, we don't talk as you know, former uh, colonizer and former colonized, you know, citizen. So we've Russia didn't do the slave trade. Yeah. So Russia is helping also Mali and Burkina Faso uh, uh, deal with the uh, uh, so-called uh, terrorism. Terrorism. So what? Know. That but that seems to be another problem. So you're talking about elections. What? What are the main issues? How pro-Western a government is or a person is? Or what, what is happening, actually? And would the United States tolerate um, the result of an election, which gave sort of a thumbs? I mean, the, ele the, the United States, I think, uh, I mean, the U.S. doesn't have no more teeth in Africa Why? because uh, there's so many different players I mean uh, you know the actors like France I mean uh, 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 China Russia so uh, uh, and then the Africans are becoming more assertive Washington what can Washington do okay we don't give you money mm -hmm. we don't give you military aid that China and Russia can provide mm -hmm. so uh, the US will have at some point uh, no choice but, you know, to get down from the pedestal and mm -hmm. start doing, talking to those folks like, <laughs> like mano a mano, like, like uh -huh. uh, equal. Mm -hmm. Maybe not totally equal, but, you know, uh, at least, uh, you know, let's do business and then we can do better than the Russia. That's what they, they, have, they have to do. And, and, for example, if you see um, uh, South Africa, South Africa is growing defiant. South Africa is taking Israel to to an international court. If alleging, they can get it there, yes, yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm yeah, shocked that you know uh, Israel is committing you know uh, uh, genocide. Mm -hmm. In in so uh, South That's Africa. That's what South Africa is alleging. The, the interesting thing to me about South Af Af Africa is that they're also kind of the head of BRICS. Yes, uh, which is an alternate economic um, power. Yeah challenging the hegemony of U.S. capitalism, really, in Africa, correct? Yeah, that's also... Not, they're yeah. not socialists. Not so, they're not socialists. No, they're not. You know, it's I interesting know. because the problem with, you know, our opinion here in the West is that when a country in Africa or in the black and brown world is not following mm -hmm. the U.S. or France, then they tagged as anti or pro-Russia. Right. Mandela, Nelson Mandela, who was the first black president of uh, uh, South Africa, told a reporter in the U.S., not because you guys have a problem with uh, uh, um, uh, Cuba mm -hmm. or uh, another okay. or Russia, that we necessarily have to be fo have to follow you. Right. We're not necessarily pro-Russia or pro-Cuba. We are friends with them as much as we want to be friends mm -hmm. with the U.S. and the. But if you are against Russia, it's not our problem. Yeah, we do right. business with Russia, so you cannot force us. And 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 then and, and South Africa showed it. Most of the countries didn't follow the U.S. and the Western world in the war against. Uh, 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 I mean, in, in the war in Ukraine. Right. Why? You know, I mean. Okay, so that's yeah. that was one of the times when. Your opinion shocked me and caused me to change my thinking is that when you came back once mm. from the Ivory Coast and pointed out that all over Ivory Coast there are Putin signs. Oh, yeah. Putin. Why? Why? It's a matter of pride, you know. Putin, <laughs> for most of the African, is courageous enough to stand against the, you West. Know, the West. Because in the mentalities, in the, you know, people's mind over there, the West has always been seen as, you know, an oppressive 
you know, uh, 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 block. Not as them. a liberating. Not as a liberating. No. They were, you know, pro, I mean, they, they conducted, you know, slave trade, colonization, and, and for a long time, they've been using uh, Africa as the, their playground for militarism, as their, play, I mean, as, you know, uh, they, you know, uh, a well of, you know, resources that they were able to tap into mm -hmm. with no restraint. Mm -hmm. Now these countries want to be free mm -hmm. and they want to, uh, so um, for, for most of the Africans, uh, 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 the West is not, has no credibility mm -hmm. to tell them who to go against or, and then I also talk to many people, the, the, the current, you know, situation in the in, in Middle East Horrible. is eroding, is eroding the, you know, the, you know, uh, the sympathy for the West. Uh, most of them don't want to be caught in the middle of, you know, a conflict between Palestinians and Israelis. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, the way it has developed with, you know, uh, uh, all these uh, military campaigns in is in in Palestine in, in Palestine, you know, uh, is eroding the support for the Western world, as that they are seeing to be giving a, a blank check. Mm -hmm. um, that's why uh, South Africa is rising to uh, take Israel, which is a, a very significant move. Israel to uh, I don't to think Americans know how significant it is, but let me go back. So BRICS mm -hmm. is Brazil, Russia, uh, India, India, China, China South, South Africa. Africa. But yeah. they've recently been joined by a lot of other countries yeah. as well. But BRICS is like not an alliance. It is an alternate economic capitalist power that's rising in the world. And you're right, South Africa being in that, sort of breaks, doesn't break its ties with the West, but it clearly means that the South African economy is going to be at least helped by those other BRICS countries, correct? Yeah, and, and it's interesting that Africans are not seeing, you know, their positions as breaking the ties or not. They're right, seeing right, that right. we have, Just increasing we, yeah, their ties. We, are, uh, we are sovereign. Yeah. We want to do business with Everywhere. everybody. Right. So now <laughs> it's time for the West to accept to that up. and then say, okay, maybe it's time for no more militarism and business with everybody mm -hmm. in good faith and good uh, in friendship. Well, I don't think the Africans want militarism, period, do they? No, they but don't. Nobody does. Nobody does. But they, at least they want also to increase the military power to be able to resist against what they call uh, agent of destabilization used by the West. Mm -hmm. For the, for most Africans, the terrorists are good friends, good buddies with the West. Really? Be, and then also are the result of the adventures that the West got into in Libya, in you know that have destabilized the whole the whole continent. So uh, uh, they want to get more military independence, but when they are under the the umbrella of, uh, of uh, the former colonial power, the colonial powers like to come as the gendarmes, mm -hmm. as, you know, the, 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 the cops, rather than giving the means to the Africans to fight uh, those uh, 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 terrorism and all these menaces. But there's also a big menace that will, will, will hit Africa, which is climate change. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I'm not getting into the debate or right, what please. is, you know, but yeah. <laughs> it's more that the effects of climate change are being seen already in Africa. And Africa will pay a large price because most of its economy is, you know, agricultural, yeah. uh, uh, mining, and, and, and so. And then uh, 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 I, I was in Abidjan. Ivory Coast has lost 95% of its original forests. 95? 95, to, uh, if not more, to uh, cash crops. Because for a long that's time... That's not climate change. Yeah, I mean, that's not climate change, but, uh, you know, if you lose 95% yeah. of your forests... That no affects water, climate. That affects climate. Right. And that affects even your microclimate mm -hmm. before even it affects... Listen, I was uh, driving, you know, uh, on uh, the streets of Abidjan, 
wherever I go and then there is uh, like, uh, 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 there are trees, it's fresh. <laughs> when I get to a part of the countries where there's no trees, it's hot and, you know, unbearable. So, uh, uh, and then the rising of the sea level, there's, there's a lot of menaces that are uh, going to hit Africa. And then, uh, so, uh, we have to see, Africa will grow more defiant, not defiant, but assertive vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis the West. The West doesn't have no, uh, the power anymore. Why not? European, European economies are, 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 you know, they're plunging because there's no more room for growth. Mm -hmm. There's less and less countries to, uh, to, uh, to exploit. Mm -hmm. China is no longer, you know, that or big. Or Russia. Or Russia. This China is no longer this big factory where you go and then you you make your uh, uh, your manufacturing uh, manufactured goods and and then you know China also is a, a dominant power so China might be even buying you know a part of Europe <laughs> or the United States uh, the United mm -hmm. States yep. uh, uh, African countries are are growing rebellious and defiant. So where does uh, the Europeans who are addicted to capitalism will get cheap labor, cheap, uh, uh, cheap uh, resources to make profits? Mm -hmm. There's no room for, for Europe to grow. The European uh, 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 um, demography is declining, right. or at least there's no more you know, youth. There's more uh, 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 old people than, you know, it's an yeah. older population. So that's true here. So, I mean, uh, for example, Angola, uh -huh. Angola, who, uh, which is a former colony from Portugal, Portugal right. is almost ruling Portugal today. I mean, I'm not saying that Angola has taken over Portugal, but most of the investments in Portugal, a lot of investment in Portugal come from Angola. Mm. Angolans and, you know, businessmen from Angola and uh, corporates from Angola are taking over chunks of, you know, uh, Portugal's mm. economy, you know. so. Uh, Europe has to sit down with Africa and say, redefine the relationship, friendship rather than, you know, domi right. domination to uh, So this is what we're going to see in 2024. There are the elections, like uh, in Rwanda, we'll see a guy who has been there for almost 30 years now since the genocide. He's, he's, he's uh, changed the constitution to be able to run until 2034, I don't know. Wow. You have... Uh, you have also uh, in uh, Tunisia a mm -hmm. guy who uh, was uh, uh, coming with all the hopes of, you know, bringing more democracies, turning to be an autocrat, and then and uh, and then we'll see. And then also depending on who is going to be elected <laughs> in, in the United, U.S. In the United, United States, States, we know who's going to be elected. Yeah, we don't know yet, but no, you know, but things look <laughs> creepy a little. Not but to it's me, interesting how much. A lot of Africans over there ra would like to deal with uh, 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 power. I mean, a government in the U.S. that they know maybe that, uh, it's not uh, very friend <laughs> with them. But I know they, they know where they, get, they they stand with that power, rather than you know uh, uh, a government that pretends to be uh, a Democrat. Mm -hmm. To be, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, holding the values of democracy dearly, and that are involved in wars right. around the world, right? Especially wars in the third world. Especially wars right. in the third world, right? And 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 then there's also a, a lot of conflicts that are, you know, going under the radar, you know, like in uh, uh, Sudan, right. in uh, in. Um, uh, uh, a lot of conflicts in Africa that you know are kind of uh, uh, forgotten and simmering yes but uh we'll see That's, okay yeah we'll I see i think we're almost out of time but thank you oh my pleasure Cindy. and we will be back in we'll be back a, in about a month thank you yeah and then we'll follow you know this election in senegal and see how you not know, only in senegal but in all these countries and in the u.s in the u.s yeah it's interesting you know <laughs> across the uh, the atlantic ocean i mean uh, from each side of the Atlantic Ocean, you know, two major, you know, uh, democracies are going to uh, have elections, and we'll see. And then, uh, you know, if the elections go well, because there's also uh, some uh, some uh, 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 worries about how the election yeah. will turn here. If 
the US can no longer be an example of uh, uh, clean and proper elections, the well, rest of our, the world can go into chaos. One of our major <laughs> candidates might be in jail. Oh, uh, the rest of the world could be, you know, in, in, in jail uh, too. In jail, okay. <laughs> in jail too. All right, thank All right. you very much. My See pleasure, Sandy. See you in a month.